this is a great experience for me to get to meet and interview a young man who's an alumni of Central High School. Mama is one of our great librarians at Reagan Elementary. This is Josh Steed. And Josh, you're here for several reasons. I'm always looking for a story of an alumni or a current student who has done amazing things. And you have done that, and you didn't seek out what happened recently. Well, a year ago. Was it about a year ago? A year and a half ago. Okay. <clears throat> Josh is a student in grad school at Hardin Simmons, Hardin -Simmons, Simmons mm -hmm. and um, is a dorm counselor, a residence advisor, mm -hmm. and uh, now working on his MBA. And all of that, we would already be proud of you. Mm -hmm. And I told you before our interview, Josh, that when several people heard who I was interviewing today, everyone thinks they had a part, they are so proud of you and want to take credit in addition to your parents in <laughs> raising you. Mm -hmm. And that, many of them didn't even know why I'm interviewing you. It was just the kind of young man you have been your, throughout your life. But what we're here to talk about and share with probably most of the people in our community don't know the story because it happened out of town. Mm -hmm. um, Josh happened to walk in on an awful incident and uh, helped, he jumped in and helped rescue one of your friends from a horrible intruder mm -hmm. and has won a national, international award from the Carnegie Foundation. So I want to back up now and you just give us, and I've asked Josh uh, not to, nor would, did he want to give the gory details of the incident because it involved a shooting, mm -hmm. but the, to transmit and encourage our audience to, uh, not be to being not be reluctant to jump in and help when something cross our path you didn't seek that out mm -hmm. that morning had no idea and yet in some ways you are not going to be the same mm -hmm. because of this incident it was so profound yes, so can you give us just whatever you're willing to share of that day yes ma'am Oh, it was September 7th of 2011, and I was actually in the office already, and Jacob and I were both working. He was my coworker and one of my At good friends. At an apartment complex. Apartment complex, yes, ma'am. And my back was turned to the door. I was on the computer, and Jacob was at the front desk greeting people, and um, a man walked in. He was one of our residents. He came in all the time, um, nothing out of the ordinary. And with my back turned the door, I just hear a loud pop, um, sound like a firecracker. I didn't really think anything of it at the moment. Um, turned around and Jacob screamed, what are you doing? And that's when he dove behind a freestanding fireplace to try to protect himself. Um, Mr. Lee chased after him for whatever reason. He didn't come after me. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to pick up the chair that I was sitting in chase him around the, the fireplace and um, throw the chair at him, um, startle him a little bit, and then as he tried to turn towards me, I charged after him and disarmed him. And when I disarmed him, that's when I realized that Jacob had been shot. In the head? Yes, ma'am. And he was uh, a good friend, so had you ever seen anybody shot before? Mm -mm, no, ma'am. And for you to know somebody um, what happened then? Um, give us just a little bit of information about that. Well, I saw that Jacob was shot, and I um, didn't really know what was going on. I, I just reacted, and I started to run out the door, 
And when I ran, I saw the gun and afraid that Mr. Lee would get back up. I grabbed the gun and I threw it outside and hid it in some bushes. And I started calling the police and I, I ran into the middle of the street. It was a, one of the busy streets in Abilene and tried to wave down some cars. And when the police picked up, told them what happened um, and they were there within five minutes. Um, and one of the other residents walked up and he actually walked inside and Jacob was standing up, don't know how, he doesn't remember anything, was standing up trying to figure out what was going on. Um, the other resident helped Jacob sit down in the chair um, and put some, tried to wipe the blood or hold the blood in and that's when the police got there and that's when I just, I kind of just fell to the ground and just let everyone else take care of me. It uh, then hit you, didn't it, that mm -hmm. what had happened. Um, you have won, uh, you have been recognized uh, for this and what you chose to do instead of running. Uh, I, I'm not recommending at all to our audience that they try to tackle an intruder uh, who is bent on harm. Mm -hmm. But there are things that we can do uh, when presented the, the situation to help people. Mm -hmm. That is my, what I'm wanting to get across here. Now tell me, who nominated you for this Carnegie Award? I honestly have no idea who nominated me. And um, it, you got it just a very few months ago, mm -hmm. December, is that not right? And this is not only b beautiful, but it is highly significant. Only, you're the only Texan, and only how many at the time you got yours? I think there was 14 of us. Nationwide, mm -hmm. who got this Carnegie Award. Yes, and uh, most people know Carnegie because he, it, Many, a long, long time ago, gave a lot of his money that libraries, he mm -hmm. has mostly supported, he's known for his mm -hmm. support of libraries. And, but this is recognizing people who, what, uh, describe it for me. Who are they looking for to give this award? He started the fund um, over a hundred years ago. He put five million dollars into the fund and he actually started it when some of his friends were in a mining accident and the people had gone down to help their friends and then I think it was 14 of his people that he knew passed away in that tragedy um, and he donated five million dollars to people that either give their lives or um, put themselves in a harmful situation when they had the chance to run uh, to save someone whether it's from a drowning or a fire or a shooting um, and they actually gave me a book or they're gonna send me a book every year I think of the new people and the people from the last three years and there's just many stories of people that of risk, inspiration of inspiration mm -hmm. well open it and show us what's inside the box itself is lovely it is. My goodness, um, it's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Not only is it significant, even if you had just gotten a piece of paper, it would have been significant. Mm -hmm. But this is, uh, uh, I've never seen an award as beautiful as this. Mm -hmm. All right, you have been honored and it's been some months have you had to go through a process internally to uh, sort out and reflect or almost have post-traumatic stress? Is that mm -hmm. an extreme description? No, it's, um, it's almost been, I guess we're pushing two years now and um, probably this last year, last couple months, I've finally started to feel like, you know, there's no repercussions anymore. I can, I feel myself completely again. Um, Jacob and I both went through counseling. Um, we, my, my sister is actually a counselor, so that always helps too. But 
you know, it takes a lot of talking. You can't hold things in like this. You have to talk to people, um, get it out there, get your feelings out there. Um, and you know, as hard as it as hard as it was, it's things like this, the medal, and um, the love that his family shows me, and those things are the things that really bring brought me healing through the situation. You know, some people may not realize that it would take a healing when you were the hero, which I know you don't like that word, um, but it was just so complex and um, had, had a potential to be far worse. Your friend who has now uh, recuperated, mm -hmm. but um, you don't get shot in the head and not have the rest of your life uh, some repercussions from mm -hmm. that. But Josh, you um, are still a very young man and um, you're an insp you already were so fine. And this is uh, a story for our community not, way beyond you, but about you and how you uh, were willing to not hide, mm -hmm. but jump in and um, not only save your friend, but um, maybe others. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to thank you uh, and your friends that you don't even know who love you in this community, who taught you, who were classmates. Uh, We're so proud and you've inspired. If you just inspire one person, uh, it'll even be better than this beautiful award, won't it? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Definitely. Wow. And um, just something that I want to say about the whole situation is, as hard as it was and as, as much hurt and pain there, there is in the situation, Jacob and I both agree that it is the best day in our life. Um, just from the gift of getting to see our miracle through his healing, um, through the love that our community has brought us um, the days following. Um, and you know, the biggest thing that we've seen is that we've, it's opened our eyes to how much hurt there is in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's made us realize how important it is to be the good in the world. Um, Travis Seekins, who's the VP for technology at Hardin Simmons, he spoke at uh, the Hardin Simmons graduation just last week. And he talked about the shooting and he talked about um, the tragedy in the world, 9-11 and um, Boston bombings and things like that. And he talked about how we need to be the type of people that run to the smoke. Um, and his speech, and I actually have some words from him that really inspired me and meant a lot to me. He says, our world is full of hate, disappointment, and broken dreams. There's smoke all around us. Um, he then said, are we willing to put our own safety aside and run to the smoke? Um, and that's the most important thing to me, just because we don't know who's in pain. We don't know who can't support themselves, and we don't know um, who's in troubled times. And whether we're the person that runs in and actually saves their coworker, or we're the, pers the family and friends that support me afterwards, um, we need to be the type of people that are the good in the world, mm -hmm. that are supporting those that can, can't support themselves, helping the, those that need help, and just being the good because if I didn't have those type of people in my life, then I wouldn't have been able to go through the healing process like I did. And could be negatively impacted the rest of your life. Yes, ma'am. And those around you. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Well, it's the opposite of that. You <laughs> have certainly blessed us. Thank you. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs>